Manifestos are paradoxes, permanent and ephemeral, serious and comical, sincere and ironic. They are unstable in their decisiveness. They can be magical, and they can be deadly. The good ones demand to be overthrown. They beg for their obsolescence to be proven by the vision of future generations. Performance is the materiality of a manifesto. The root of the word manifestus translates to struck by hand. Manifestos are about striking ideas in striking gestures, wrapped around a brick and tossed at the establishment, or in our case, perhaps carved into the brick. With the countless voices of those who preceded me whispering in my ear, I write a manifesto. A manifesto for material knowledge. This is a working document, a code that outlines a set of beliefs as operative means to be exercised with rigor. The manifesto itself is subject to change as a result of the experiments it demands. It does not yet declare a truth. It is in search of it. 1. We must engage in experiments in the pursuit of material knowledge and agency, to learn or relearn how to shape the space of our world. For these experiments, four materials have been chosen. Let's begin. Sandstone is earth. When she folds, she's the backbone of the Appalachians, the Carpathians, the Apennines. When she lies down upon this earth, she forms the magnificent plateaus of the American West. It is at once resilient and malleable. Its grain is unyielding, composed of quartz and feldspar. And yet its formation allows for plasticity. The dialogue between water and sandstone is a conversation that has lasted thousands of years. Water subtracts matter and adds form. Two. Weathering is a metamorphosis of material, brought about through material interaction. 3. Maintenance and construction are equal. Acts of creation, exercises in agency, exercises in material knowledge. To test these propositions, the queen of sedimentary rock is the ideal subject. A wall of nearly unformed stone presents us with the invitation for agency to continue the process of formation. And in doing so, our experiment will pick up the ancient narrative between sandstone and water in a process of combined maintenance and weathering. I think we can all agree Copper is gorgeous. In its raw state, it shines with a reddish brown hue. And when it oxidizes, it forms a patina, a skin that showcases a spectrum of purples, greens, and blues. But copper is not just aesthetics. Copper and its alloys have advanced human civilization since the Stone Age. Four. Human use is as much a manifestation of weathering as those brought about through natural processes. Human life and copper are inextricably linked. In the experiment that follows, we will observe the phenomenon of a growth of skin and the subsequent wearing away of that skin through the interaction with the human body. Copper will be transposed onto objects of daily wear. Keyboards, cars, shower mats, doorknobs, pencils, maybe even toilets. Perhaps then, the striking visual representation of use displayed by the transformation of this precious metal will inspire us to similar transformations in other materials that we interact with each day. We might discover how material wears beyond its weathering. Plywood, the clear champion of all manufactured boards. Medium density fiber board, oriented strand board, 
particle board. They can compete with plywood. The use of cross graining or the 90 degree rotation of plywood sheets as they are laminated to form a composite material defines the characteristics of plywood. Plywood reduces expansion and shrinkage, reduces splitting when nailed, and is strong across all dimensions. And as a consequence, plywood is ubiquitous. Just open your eyes and you'll find it. Five, observation is key. This is how we learn from our experiments and the experiments of others. Six, we understand the affordances of our materials, their limitations and inspiration. Clues as to how to reclaim agency. The expressive edge of plywood showcases its process of formation and offers us a clue, a hint to how we might engage in plywood's metamorphosis of weathering through a process of lamination and delamination. A process inspired by the agency shown by those who have no other choice. When replacement is not an option, we might find a richness in a concurrent addition and subtraction of surface. Glass block. Last, but certainly not least, the ideal basement window. Long appreciated for its affordability and its ability to allow light while denying a view. Its form presents glass as a volume rather than a surface. A strange proposition when considered within the realm of building material, but not so strange when we remember that the glass that we primarily interact with each day is a vessel. It's a form that was blown. It is not surprising then that these glass bricks or bricks de vera used to be hand blown. Seven, we must know material history, its origins, in order to know material present and future, for compliance and for subversion. Armed with a new understanding of the history of this material, we find a new way of engagement through an old method of technology, a process that exists closer to our hands, a process by which we can preserve or maybe even celebrate the deterioration of material through maintenance. Eight, there is no such thing as material failure. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger.